Hello lovelies, it's Sarcasm the Sickness, and welcome back for another episode of Skill Link. First, before I start with all the stuff, I do want to apologize that this video and the previous two videos have gone up so freaking late on my channel. Um, and the day before that even, I didn't even have a video. There's just been, there's just been circumstances that have kind of messed up my schedule. Um, like, I, I had the last two episodes of Omega Ruby pre-recorded, but things like, like, rendering times taking too long, or just, like, waking up at the wrong time, just a bunch of stupid stuff kind of prevented me from being able to get those up on time, including today. Today's no exception. Um, I do want to apologize for that because I really hate having these videos go up so late. It's really just, it's not my intention, it really isn't, and it's definitely not my intention to miss any days, so... I guess, in the end, the lesser of two evils is is uploading really late. I would much rather upload really late than not at all. So hopefully you guys will bear with me until I can sort this out and, you know, just generally get better at this. Because honestly, I am still pretty new to YouTube. I mean, I don't know, it's just I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to do this right, I guess. So you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. But, um, in today's video, you will see me drawing something. This is actually some old footage. Um, this was back from before Christmas. This was a Christmas gift to the based Ellie from the Twerkle. Uh, put both of their. I'll try to remember to put both of their channels and Twitters in the description below. Um, they both have Pokemon content. I believe Ellie has Pokemon content still. Um, so definitely go check them out. And um, I do. Well, obviously, I'm going to start off by telling you about today's topic. Today's topic is something that was recently brought up and I think it's appropriate to talk about to talk about right now because of I guess recent events in the Pokemon community here on YouTube. Um, and that topic is how I got out of depression. Um, I guess I should start off by saying if you guys didn't know um, and this you for those of you who have been around longer you probably do. For those of you who are recent, um, a while ago when I was much smaller in subcount, when this channel was a lot smaller, I did a video um, talking about depression and um, talking about me in regards to depression. So, I mean, yeah, so if you if you weren't there for that, then you may not know that I do suffer from depression. Um, and it is, it has, it had been a very big part of my life. Um, so if you want to go check out that video first before watching this one, that's fine. This one isn't going to necessarily relate to that all too much besides just some topic. I mean, that originally that video was mostly about, you know, just my experiences with depression and how I feel about depression. This is going to be targeted more towards getting out of that. So it's not necessarily, uh, they're not necessarily like directly related. You don't have to watch one to understand the other. But um, I just I do want to put that out there. I do want to put that into the air. Just be like, hey, go check this out if you if you want to. If you if you care about, you know, my experiences with depression, I suppose. Um, I do want. Uh, I guess I should mention why I think it's appropriate to talk about it right now, and that is because if you, I mean, I'm going to assume that a lot of you, um, watch other Poketubers. Uh, there, I'm sure there are some of you who are only here for the art and. Or if there are, then that's amazing, and thank you, and welcome, and hi, how did you find me? Um, but, um, yeah, I'm going to assume that a lot of you do watch other Poketubers, and you've probably been exposed to the fact that a lot of them have been going through some emotional stuff right now. Um, or a decent amount of them, at least, some of the bigger ones, you know? And, um, especially if you are following their Twitters, then you have probably seen a lot of that. And if you're following their Tumblrs, oh god. Um, then I kind of, I almost pity you, it's, Poke some of the, some of the Poketuber tumblers are pretty freaking depressing, it's become mostly a place to share silly images of things, and then rant about how sad we are, and I'm no exception, honestly a lot of what I put on my tumbler is ranting and stuff, so, it's like, you know, if you're not, if, you, if you're one that cares about, like, Poketuber drama, if you care about, if you, or maybe not such so much drama, if you care about like the mental state of your favorite Poketubers, then you may want to start following their tumblers or just check them out every once in a while. 
um, because they do give some pretty good insight on how they're feeling, I suppose. Um, but if you don't care, then you really don't need that drama in your life. You don't need that negativity. Don't even, don't even go there, dude. Don't even go there. It's not for everybody. It really isn't. Just like Twitter. Just like Poketubers, twirdler, wow, twirdlers. I don't even know what the frick happened there. Jesus. Anyway, just like people's Twitters are not always everybody's cup of tea. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, it seems, it, I mean, it's, it's apparent that there is a lot of people going through some stuff right now. And, um, so I figure this topic will be helpful not only for those who are suffering from depression right now but for those of you who are kind of like watching you know these like watching myself or watching other poketubers and going why are they so sad all the time what's going on you know hopefully this will help give you a little insight on that and you know and and the struggle that they have to kind of go through to get out of that i suppose um i guess i should talk um, um just a moment about depression um with myself i suppose um, I was diagnosed with depression back in, back like before 11th grade, like I think the end of my 10th grade year. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was, it was either the end of my 10th grade year or the 10th, the end of my 11th grade year. I can't quite remember at this point, honestly, but um, it was a while back, it was a while back, back in high school. And um, and obviously it's, it's one of those things where I had been suffering from it for years before that, but we didn't really know what it was or know how to diagnose it. We didn't know that it was a thing, you know, it's just like, like, oh, she's just a teenager, she's just upset, you know, whatever, but no, it turned out to be a very serious thing. Um, but, um, yes, yeah, so that has been, that has been a part of my life for quite some time now, and I do want to say that, um, it's going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life. I'm, I'm pretty sure that there is no clear-cut way to, like, finally, officially, you know, concretely defeat a mental illness like depression or anxiety or bipolar disorder or OCD. It's more like you go through through times where you don't experience it for a very long time and that's wonderful, but then it kind of comes back for a little bit. And, and honestly, the biggest hope, the biggest hope for me is not that I beat depression, because I do feel like that's unrealistic. I honestly don't think, I, I do think it is a permanent problem. Um, my biggest hope is that when I do fall back into depression, I can remember how to pick myself up from it really quickly. That is my biggest hope. And, um, and I guess I, I put that out there, I say that because I don't want people to have, I guess, like this false sense of like, like, oh, it's like a sickness, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll just cure it. It'll be fine. No, that's not really the way it works. If you're experiencing true clinical depression, then it is a chemical imbalance that is going to be with you and in your head for the rest of your life. And it's just up to you to figure out how to fix that. And that's what we're talking about today. That is what we're talking about, is how to fix that chemical imbalance. Now, there are different types of depression. I do want to get those out of the way first. Um, you know, like, when you... When somebody... When you, like, have, like, a like loss you know if there's loss in your life whether you know like a family member dies a dog dies you break up with somebody you know that you lose a friend stuff like that you can feel depressed because of that but that is not true clinical depression that is like that's mourning more so that is more like um it's it, that is actually very much a temporary thing i mean you're always going to be sad when you think about that person I mean, except for sometimes with exes, maybe eventually you'll get over it, and that'll be fine, that's wonderful. But, um, you know, like, when you, if, you're, if a family member dies, then you're always going to feel sad when you think about them, and you're always going to, you know, like, on the anniversary of that death or their birthday or whatever, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt. And trust me, I know that. Um, but it's not a true, like, daily struggle depression. That is what clinical depression, that is what major depression is. Um... So, yeah, so like things like that, things like temporary, like, like I am suffering right now, so I am sad right now, depression, that is not what we're talking about. We are talking about just every day feels like freaking just like a dark tunnel that you can't get out of. You know, you keep walking and walking and walking and there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Everybody keeps telling you that the light is there and you can't see it. That is the kind of depression we're talking about. Um... So, of course, let's dive right into, I guess, things that have helped me. One of the biggest things that has helped me that 
or like there here there are things that have helped me and there that like that I stuck with and there are things that helped me that I didn't and I wish I had F biggest one of those the second category is um, exercising when I started up track in my senior year of high school I was probably the happiest I had been in years I felt so freaking good about myself. I felt amazing, and not because like, oh, okay, I'm healthier now. I'm, you know, I'm exercising more. And that's great. You know, I'm working out. Look at my calves. Look at my whatever. No, it was like, or no, like scientifically, exercising produces, you know, like basically the happy chemical, the chemical in your brain that makes your that balances out your mood, that makes your mood brighter and happier and more cheerful. So literally, exercise actually does serve as like a partial cure to depression. It actually literally balances that out and counteracts, you know, the fact that your brain doesn't produce those those happy chemicals by itself. Um, so exercise, even if you're not the type that's like, even if you're not like, oh, I don't like, I don't really care about like working out or anything, you know, maybe just take a walk. Just take a walk in the morning or the afternoon or whatever, you know, after school, whatever, get some fresh air, be outside, be alone, maybe sometimes just be alone with your thoughts, give yourself some time to think about things, reflect on your day, reflect on what your day is going to be like, you know, whatever it is, you know, take a light jog, you know, you don't have to go hardcore, you don't have to go to the hit the gym every day, maybe like three or four times a week, you know, a walk, a jog, a run, it could really do worlds for you. It really, really could. And you know what? When you're feeling better, maybe you'll move up to other things. Maybe you'll go out and play tennis with your friends. Maybe you'll go and play basketball with the guys. Maybe you'll join a sports team if you're still in school. Maybe you'll... I don't know. I mean, there's still sports teams. There's community sports teams, too, if you're if you're interested in that. There's, like, there's running clubs, things like that. But, um, I guess that first step is getting up and doing it by yourself. Because sometimes it can be scary to go out there, like, all of a sudden and just be with all these strange new people that you haven't met before or whatever, or, you know, if you're in high school, maybe you don't like all of them or you don't think they like you. It may be good to start off by yourself for, at first, and that is going to be a huge, a huge step for you. It really is. And it was a huge step for me to join track. It really... I was so nervous about it, I really was. I didn't think I was going to do well, and I actually did pretty, pretty exceptional, considering that was my first and only year of track. Um... But, um, but yeah, exercise can be such a big thing. And you know what? I did try to keep up with it, but I ended up falling off a lot of the time. I tried to keep up with it with, um, with We Fit. That was actually very good. It was actually very helpful for me a lot of the time. Um, well, when I was doing it anyway, you know, like, like get, getting those early stretches in the morning and, you know, just, it was really great and it's, it's a cute program, or it's a cute little game where it, it does encourage you to, to be healthier and be happier and stuff. It's just, it's just nice. It really is nice. Um, so if you have a Wii, if you have a Wii Fit, that could help you, that could help you to, you know, to start that exercising process without having to go outside necessarily, because sometimes that can be scary too, and if you have anxiety, that can be a big deal as well. Um, so, you know, Wii Fit is a good way to kind of do that on your own. Obviously, you can just exercise in your own home by yourself. You know, whatever. That's that's just... Exercise actually legitimately, scientifically helps. Um, there are other options that people seek. And um, one of those things that I tried was religion. I tried to really dive into religion and, you know, and ask God for help and ask... You know, ask Jesus for help, ask ask my fellow church peoples for help, and, you know, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I joined the, I was part of the church choir. I, um, I volunteered there pretty often, actually. And, um, it didn't really help. It, it didn't really help me at all. And I know it helps some people, which is great. And if religion does help you feel better about, about anything, about yourself, about like your your mood about you know the world around you that is wonderful and i encourage that like if it makes you feel like there is hope for you then please by all means you know dedicate your time to it learn more about it spend more time around people who believe the same things as you that's wonderful for you that is absolutely wonderful for you but it didn't work for me so if you're one like me who you know who who tries or you know is trying or has tried to dive into religion and stuff and that didn't that didn't help you please don't feel bad because honestly it's it's, it's not for everybody it really isn't um if anything religion made me more sad about everything 
it made me feel like the world was a dark, hypocritical place where, you know, people would would say, well, I believe in God and I love everybody, but I hate gays and I hate people who don't believe the same things as me and I hate Democrats and I hate, th you know, it's like, I felt like, like the Christian religion is so, like, segmented and so jaded and so broken. I, it just, it made me depressed. It actually made me feel worse. Trying to believe in God actually legitimately made me feel worse. And, um, and I could tell you a story about, about, um, about, I guess, my, my final, I guess, big encounter with God, but I don't have time in this episode, I suppose. Maybe it'll be a later one. Maybe it'll be the next one, who knows? Eventually, I'll probably tell you that story. But I did tell it on a stream once, so some of you may already know what I'm talking about. But, um, religion was one of those things that I tried, that a lot of people try, and it didn't help for me. So don't feel bad if it doesn't. Don't feel bad if it does, shit. If it makes you happy, then please, by all means, be happy. I want that for you. I do. And you should want that for yourself. Um, but like I said, it isn't for everybody. Um... Eventually, oh, okay, here. Another thing that people try is relationships. You know, whether it be, I mean, I'm, I'm talking more like romantic relationships. I'm not so much talking about friendships, because friendships really do help, and trying to maintain these friendships really does help you, as long as you're friends with the right people, that is. As long as you're friends with people who are going to be, you know, helpful to you and motivational to you and not negative in any, or not, not in any way, because there's, there's no way that a person's going to be completely positive all the time, but as long as they're generally a positive influence on you, it should, it should work out. It really should. Um, but um, I am talking more about romantic relationships. A lot of people try to dive into relationships to make themselves feel better about themselves, and depression does make you feel very crappy about yourself. Um, so sometimes you you feel like you need that outside validation, like like well, if she says that you know that I'm smart and handsome. And, and wonderful, then I must be, right? Or if he says that I'm beautiful and, you know, and I'm intelligent and, you know, I have a nice voice or I have a nice whatever, you know, then I then it must be true, right? That's not the way it usually works. If anything, I almost discourage people to try to be in a committed relationship when they haven't figured out themselves yet. Because I can't even, I cannot even tell you how many relationships of mine ended because I was still suffering from depression, and they couldn't deal with it anymore. I, there was, there was a guy who, who was literally all set up to like to, to literally go get married to me, and he broke up with me because, because I was depressed and he couldn't deal with it anymore. Like, literally, that's how, how much it can affect, not only your life, obviously. But the life, the lives of those who care about you, it it really can be devastating. Obviously, I'm not like upset about that the, the the breakup thing anymore because it did lead to me meeting the most wonderful person I've ever met in my entire life. So don't get me wrong on that, please. Um, I'm very happy where I'm at right now. I'm the happiest I've ever been with anybody. So don't get get that get that stupid crap out of your head right now. Anyway, um, for some people, relationships do help, and I'm not saying they don't. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the relationships that I see help with depression are relationships where both people are depressed and are trying to work through it together, um, because it's easier to relate at that point. It's really hard for somebody who has no idea what depression is like to help you who may be in the, or to help somebody with depression get out of it, because honestly they have no idea. They have no idea. And, you know, at first it's like, oh, I'm gonna be here for you, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there when you're, when you're down, I'll, I'll, I'll say whatever I need to to make you happy, you know, I'll do whatever I have to to make you happy, we'll go out to ice cream, we'll go out to a movie, whatever it is, we'll just stay in bed all day, you know, I'm going to help you. And that's wonderful, and it always starts out that way. But it never stays that way, because eventually it gets to the point where it's like, well, I feel like nothing I do helps, and I feel like nothing I do makes a difference. Or, you know, you're always sad and there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing, you know, when you're sad, it makes me feel helpless. When you're sad, it makes me feel like I'm powerless. And you don't want to, you really don't want to put somebody through that. Because you yourself already feel powerless enough, I'm sure. And watching somebody you care about also feel that way. But you sitting there going, 
you are helping me, but, you know, and without you, I'd be so much worse. But, you know, this is, this is the most you can do, and I, and, and I don't know how to, how you can help me more. Like, that is so freaking heartbreaking. I hated telling people that. I hated telling people, like, look, right now, I just need to cry. You just have to let me cry, because that's, that's what I need right now. And them watching me and just being completely heartbroken about it, just like, like, I wish I could stop her from crying, like... It's just, it's brutal. It really is. There are only very special situations where I think somebody would be able to handle that. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I do think it would have to be somebody who either is going through it and understands or has gone through it and understands in that respect. Because if you have never suffered like that, if you've never just been sitting around and just been sad for no reason at all, no logical explanation for it, then you have no idea. You really don't. And it's really hard to help somebody who is feeling that way because you don't you you can't relate. You can't relate to that. So relationships are not I really wouldn't say that as a safe bet. Friendships, yes. Family, yes. Cause I mean, if they're true friends and family, they're gonna love you no matter what. But at the same time, like they don't I guess they don't have to, they don't, they still don't need to carry as much of the burden as like a boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife does. In a weird way, in a weird way, a family member doesn't carry as much of that emotional weight as a significant other does. Um, so yeah, romantic relationships, honestly, until you've at least gotten to yourself where you can reliably, you know, keep yourself from, from getting to like the darkest, deepest, darkest places of your mind when you can reliably, you know, pick yourself up out of it within at least like a week or so. Um, when you can reliably, you know, just like rationalize the situation and at least be able to function on a day-to-day -day basis, I really wouldn't dive into a relationship. It's just not, it's, it's not, it's just going to end up making you feel worse and making this other person feel worse. And it's gonna, it's gonna break your heart, and it's gonna, it's gonna break your spirit. And I am telling you that from years of experience, from like seven, eight, nine, ten ruined relationships, because I didn't know how to pick myself up, how to cheer myself up, how to make myself happier. So when I say please don't get into a relationship, I mean I've been through it before. Please listen to me because I don't want to. I don't want you to suffer the way I suffered, and I don't want you to suffer the way my partner suffered. And I guess now it is about time to get to the point where um, where we talk about how I actually got out of depression. Um, I did mention that one relationship where the guy, you know, was like all set to get married to me and all that stuff. When he broke up, well, that was that was my last ex. That was my last ex. And when he broke up with me, um, I had to move back home, and that was heartbreaking. And um, there was just really sticky situation as far as like who's keeping what stuff. We had a pet, we had two pets together. We had we had bought like a bunch of stuff together, video games, etc. And he kept a lot of stuff that I was supposed to have that he said I would have. Just a bunch of random shit. But honestly, like the whole the only reason I'm going into it is because that whole situation made that the ending of that relationship drag out so long and um and even after that relationship there was another friend of mine who um who had said you know that he wanted to to, to be with me but then you know i waited like two months for him and at the end of those two months he was like no i don't think this is going to work out i'm not good enough for you so then i wasted even more time you know hoping for a relationship hoping for some guy to come around and make me feel better about myself and I wasted so much time. I really did. But um, but it was around that time when I had started watching the Jay Wits. I started watching Shady Penguin, um, a little bit of other Poketubers as well, but not as consistently. And um, and started to, I guess, it, it, like that was like a temporary fix. It was a temporary bandage, and it made me. It gave me something to look forward to every day. And when you're in depression, when you're like really in it, that is such a big deal. It is such a big deal to have at least one thing 
you wake up in the morning, you're like, I can't wait for Shady to upload today. I can't wait for Jaywitz to upload today. I can't wait for Nappy. I can't wait for Callum. I can't wait for Mo. Whoever it is, you can't wait for them to upload because it takes you away from all that sadness for, you know, 15 to 45 minutes and you're just, you're, 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 you feel, you know, a connection with another human being and it makes you feel so much better. Honestly, when, when people, I have had people tell me that, that, that that's what I am for them. So when I say that, like when I when I talk about this, I am talking to you about this from like I have been there. Like this is personal experience. I know what you guys are going through, and I know how much that means to you because I know how much it meant to me. So seriously, I it is a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, and I guess after in January, I discovered somebody who was doing live streams all the time. And, um, and the live streams were important to me because I could actually interact. I could actually interact with people, with him, with, with, you know, with other living human beings out there who were enjoying the same things as me, enjoying Pokemon with me. Um, and that was Mystery Jeezy's live streams. Um, and, um, and that was such a big deal for me. And it gave me, it gave me something, it gave me something even more to look forward to. It was like, 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 yeah, okay, there's a 50 minute to 45 minute videos from other people, but then there's this live stream that I go to, and you know, he'll actually talk to me, and the people in the chat will actually talk to me, and it was such a huge deal to just be in any kind of interaction with people, and um, and and to feel, and to have people like, like, oh, hey, Sarcasm the Sickness, welcome back, you know, how are you today? Like, to have people actually care, like, that was such a big deal, it really was. Um, and that's why I love streaming because I, because uh, again, it's it's from a, another from that standpoint of I know how what it feels like to to have people care that you're there, you know. Um, and yeah, those live streams meant so much to me that I started doing some drawings for Mr. AGZ. I started doing a little bit of fan art, and um, and one thing led to another, and it eventually led to me um, starting to do commission work for YouTubers and starting to think about doing, um, having my own YouTube channel. And, um, now I'm not going to say necessarily that YouTube cured me of my depression or whatever, but what it did for me was it gave me a purpose. It gave me something to strive for. It gave me something to concentrate on. It gave me something to work towards. And it didn't start out right away. It took me two months to gather up the money for the equipment I needed to get started. But even that, even that thought of I am gonna start doing something with my life, I'm gonna start doing something that makes me happy, it meant everything. It seriously meant everything. And it was around this time that I stopped believing in God, it was around this time that I decided I'm not gonna try to have God as a crutch anymore, because it hasn't done anything, believing in God hasn't done anything for me yet, and I don't think it's going to do anything for me, and I just have to concentrate on me now. So that's when I, that's when I decided officially to stop. Um, and, and essentially just pick up and, and pick up myself and start believing in myself. That was the biggest thing. I stopped believing in God so that I could start believing in myself instead. And I dove into my art and I dove into YouTube and, um, and both of these things, besides, you know, like I had like a job, obviously, um, like these things made me who I am or who I am now. Like they made me happier. They made me a lot stronger. And, um, and that is another thing that helps, is, um, is having a steady job that can be such a big help. Even if, you, like, it's one of those things, like, even if you hate the job, sometimes, if, you, if you've been doing nothing for a long time because you're depressed, sometimes just having some place to go, forcing you to get out of bed, forcing you to go and put some clothes on, take a shower, you know, go out and spend, you know, eight hours outside of your house, outside of your room, outside of the, you know, the darkness of your home, that can be such a big deal. And it was for me, it really was. And you know, okay, I didn't like the job, and no, I didn't really, like, there were a lot of mornings, in fact, most mornings where I didn't even want to get up, but I am not going to deny that it helped me. It definitely did. It def I definitely would have been a lot worse if I had spent all the time in my house just doing nothing. <laughs> um, obviously, having money coming in makes you feel a lot better. Not because money makes you happy, but because, you know, it's like, like, okay, I'm doing something for myself now, I'm earning something for myself, I'm building something for myself. It's a big deal, it's a big deal. Um, 
So yeah, having a job is a big thing. But for me, the best thing was diving into my hobbies, diving into the things that I cared about a lot. Um, and I do care about art a lot. And art has always been something, it's always been part of me. And it's always been something that I relied on when I was really sad. Like, I would draw, I would do some, some vent art, I would just draw whatever, you know, I would draw different characters, draw them being happy to make myself feel better, you know? And, and starting to really take that seriously and really, like, and really decide for myself, you know what, I don't care that I dropped out of college, I don't care that I did this, I don't care that I did that, I don't care that I don't have a job in art right now, I'm gonna make a job in art. Um, that meant everything to me, that really meant everything to me, and that's, that's what I mean by believing in myself. That's what I mean, it didn't... I had to, I had to believe in myself, even if I was uncertain, even if I was scared, to have even taken that first step. And it helps that other people believed in me too, of course, that always helps. That always helps, and honestly, like, if you... If, like, I encourage you to find people who who are encouraging to you or care about your hobbies or share in your hobbies, you know, and things that you care about because it is so important to have like a core group of people around you who who want to see you succeed, who want to see you do great things because then it's so much easier to believe in yourself. It's so much easier to believe in yourself when other people believe in you too. And so yeah, that's honestly the, the best thing that, that happened to me. Or the best thing that happened to me in regards to my depression was deciding to work on myself. Was deciding to work on things that would make me, the things that would make me happy, and the things that would um, that I I guess never had the confidence to do before. It was it was very important. It was extremely it was such a big deal. And in turn, you know, me trying this, me doing this for myself, had, it it caused a lot of really great things to happen in my life. Um, it caused a lot of, like, a lot of people to actually want to spend more time with me. Um, I succeeded pretty well in my job because of it. I, um, I, I mean, obviously, like, my YouTube career started because of it. Um, I started, you know, because of my art, or you know, my art, wow, my art improved because of it, because I decided to, to, to work on it, because I decided to believe in myself. And, um, and ultimately, I suppose, um, because I was in such a much more wonderful place, you know, mentally, emotionally, all of that, um, I was able to meet Pedro, and that's such a big deal. Because if I was still sad, I don't think this would have worked out. I don't think it would have worked out at all. I don't think he would have been interested. Um, in fact, if I was still, you know, that sad, I probably wouldn't have been... I probably wouldn't have even been on YouTube the way I am now and the way I was then when he found me. So there are people who have been saying or dropping questions into my ask um, about like, like, oh, I'm 18 years old and I've never had a girlfriend or I'm 23 years old and I've never had a girlfriend. You know, do you think I'll be lonely forever? No. I think you need to start believing yourself, believing in yourself. Sorry, I can't words right now. I think you need to start working on yourself because when you care about yourself, other people are going to notice and start caring about you too. Alright? Like, you know, it's, it's... Okay, there are people out there who really like that shy, quiet person or whatever, but a lot of times they're shy and quiet too, so they're not going to freaking talk to you. You need to build some confidence. You need to build confidence in yourself, even if you're still quiet, even if you're still, you know, like, even-tempered. You need to care about yourself. You need to believe in yourself. You need to believe that what you're doing is going to be good for you, at least. At least you, you know? Um, and other people are going to flock to that. Other people are going to see that and be like, wow, you know, this guy has it all. This girl has it all. Look at her. She's so confident. She, you know, look at the way she walks. Look at the way she holds herself. She, she knows that she's good. She knows that she, you know, matters in this world. He knows that he, you know, is going places. He knows that he has something good going for him right now. That's wonderful. And people notice that. People notice that. You know what people don't notice? Is the person who hangs their head when they walk down the hallways. They don't notice, you know, the quiet girl in the back of the classroom who doesn't talk to anybody. They don't notice the quiet guy, the sad guy who, you know, kind of stands by the lockers and just waits for class to start. 
They don't notice the employee who just does the bare minimum. They don't notice, you know, the the person who just sits in the back of the coffee shop and doesn't really do much. Just doesn't really do it. They definitely don't notice the person who sits in their house all day and doesn't talk to anybody. It doesn't try to get involved with anything. You have to do that for yourself. If you are suffering from depression, you have to try to get involved with something. Whether it be a job, whether it be religion, whether it be exercising, whether it be, you know, a hobby, YouTube, um, religion. Did I say religion? I don't know. Relationship, something. You know, friendships. You have to get yourself doing something because laying in bed and hoping that you're going to be happy tomorrow is not going to work. And trust me, I did it for months. I did it for years. I laid in bed and I hoped that I would be happy. So if you're doing that right now, I need you to get the fuck up. I need you to wake up right now, okay? I need you to wake up. I need you to look at yourself in the mirror and I need you to tell yourself that you matter. I need you to tell yourself in the mirror right now that you're beautiful, that you're handsome, that you matter, that you're intelligent, that you have talents, that you have skills that you can use in this world. I need you to go to that mirror and tell yourself that you love yourself right now. Pause this video, do it right now. Have you done it? Have you done it? No? Pause the video, do it right now. Tell yourself that you love yourself because that is the first step because if you love yourself then you're gonna try to do something to make things better for yourself all right if you hate yourself then why would you want to help you why would you want to help yourself if you hate yourself you can't hate yourself and hope that things are gonna get better because they're not okay happiness is not gonna fall into your lap you have to care about yourself first you have to care about making yourself happy. You have to care about making others happy. If making other people happy makes you happy, then by all means do that. Dive into that. Because I did that too. That's part of the reason I started YouTube is because I wanted to make other people happy. And it made me so happy. It still makes me so happy. And if this video helps even one person who, is, who has watched this, if, if I help just you, just you who are listening right now, then I am so freaking happy. I can't even tell you, okay? Please. Just just love yourself, okay? And like I, I gave you plenty of suggestions of things that have helped me. Things that didn't help me that maybe will help you. And I don't know. I guess in the comment section, if you do suffer from depression, um and you have more questions about it, about what you think, like what you, what you, what I think I sh that you should do or whatever, you know, if you want to talk about it, please feel free to. If you don't suffer from depression, um, thank you for watching this video, honestly. Thank you for, for sticking through this. Um, and if you have questions about depression, if you have questions about, you know, like, like what it does to a person, you know, how to help somebody around you, anything like that, um, Please, first of all, you can share this video with them. Um, but yeah, you can drop the, those questions into the comment section as well. Um, if you haven't already, please leave a like on the video. Obviously, I really appreciate it. Um, and you guys really always do pull through. It's just a friendly reminder, I suppose. Um, and if this is a, your first time watching one of my videos, welcome to the channel. I really would appreciate it if you would subscribe. Um, Obviously, in my skill links, I you see me doing art and stuff, and I talk about stuff like this a lot, actually. I've been talking about a lot of serious topics lately. Maybe the next topic should be kind of light. That way, we're not, like, always in the feels when we watch this. But, um... But, you know. Um... Yeah, please, please subscribe. Please join the family. Please be one of my lovelies. I would very much appreciate that. And I promise I will do my best not to disappoint you. Um... Thanks so much for watching this video. If you haven't already... Go to that mirror, tell yourself that you love yourself. If you have done it already, do it again. I don't care, do it again right now. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.